<laughs> right, uh, let's talk about the other selection that's happening at the moment, uh, the leadership election for the Labour Party. Uh, Rebecca Long-Bailey, we've talked already about her plan to let everyone turn off their phones at the weekend, although a bit of disagreement about that here. Um, she was on the breakfast sofa this morning and the interview kind of hinged on this thing that she's saying she's the one with all the fresh new ideas. But at the same time, she also says all the old ideas in the manifesto at the general election were tip-top. So at least that's the avenue they pursued on the breakfast sofa this morning. We had some of the most transformative policies within our manifesto that we've had in a generation. But the problem was that we didn't package them correctly and we oh, didn't have an overarching so on one hand, narrative. So you're saying you're the person with the new ideas, <clears throat> but what you're literally saying in the breath, same breath is we had the right ideas before, we just didn't tell people that we didn't explain it well enough. We had great policies, but as you say, we didn't explain many of them properly. So we you're saying the same thing again. You're saying the policies were right and you're saying you're a new ideas person. There were great policies in there. We didn't explain them properly. So, Lauren, are you supporting RLB? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. How, explain it to us how she can say she's got loads of new ideas while simultaneously liking all the old ideas. Well, one of the main reasons that I'm backing her is a lot of the Green New Deal stuff, a lot of the Green Industrial Revolution stuff, and she was a key architect in putting that together. So it is her So it's more <laughs> of the same forwards. rather than new stuff? <laughs> No, not at all. And, and also, those things actually did poll very well. You know, the, the Green Industrial Revolution and renationalisation poll very well with the general public. They are not the reasons that we didn't win in December. Um, it, it, she, she's principled. She is strong. I would quite like to see a female leader of the Labour Party. Um, for me as well, it's about the democracy and opening up opportunities to all. And as a party, we, we talk about that and we preach about that. And how can we do that if we're not doing that within our own party structures? And she is the main backer and advocate for open selection. And I want to see open selection. How do you think her campaign is actually going? I think her campaign is pretty much being... I think they're all on a pretty level pegging field, to be honest. They're all all over social media. They're all, you know, doing their tours and their hustings and their interviews. Um, when you actually see Rebecca live and you hear her speak, she is inspiring. There is a buzz in the room. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm rooting for her 100%. Um, Seb, Lauren's putting a brave positive spin on the Rebecca Long-Bailey campaign because the polls suggest she's not doing that well, either amongst the public or even amongst Labour activists who she's asking to vote for her. Just give us your assessment. So every metric we have suggests that Keir Starmer is far in the lead of this race. Now, the key thing we should say is there's no membership data. The campaigns don't actually have hold of that. Until they get that on the 15th of February, then a lot of it is a sort of slightly punting in the dark here. But I think what's clear is that Rebecca Long-Bailey is slightly reluctant to run for this leadership because when that election result happened, all of the key Corbynite figures were sort of taken out by that election. John McDonnell didn't want to stand. Laura Pidcock, who was really the anointed successor, she lost her seat and none of the others really stepped up to the plate. So Rebecca Lombelli began a bit sort of hesitantly into this race. I think she has got better and I think she's putting her message across sort of clear. But she's got this problem that, you know, she talked about all these new policies. What's new? It's basically saying that everything we did was right in the election, even though we had the wor second worst defeat since the Second World War. Um, and that, you know, we just need to keep doing it again and repackage it in a different way. And I think what's interesting is Labour members that I've spoken to and I've seen at the various hustings, what they say is, We've been out of power now for 10 years. It's going to be 14 years by the time we get to the next election. They feel like they want someone who can win and someone who connects with the wider public. And all the evidence shows that Keir Starmer is the best person to do that. When we get to those TV debates, which will start coming up in the next... This thing's still got ages left to go. <laughs> we finally get to the TV debate and finally get to voting. Then we'll see if you're right, Lauren, if Rebecca Long-Bailey's personality comes through and she can connect and grow her image. Because, of course, she's not that well known to the general public only people in Westminster yeah. know who she is. But generally speaking, I think she's sort of just doing OK at the moment. But if she's going to win, she's going to have to have a real punch through moment. And we haven't seen any sign of that yet. I just find the idea that Keir Starmer is the most popular and the most electable baffling because it's not what I hear. It might be what you think you're hearing, but it's not what I hear when I'm out is with no fellow... It's just the it's polling, polling. It's just opinion I just don't know what it's meant there. by electable. Because even that, um, that Channel 4 show where they polled random members of the public, Keir didn't come top of that. That was, I think, Lisa and Andy and Emily Thornbury. So, really, the polls are showing us things well, that was a focus all over the though. shop. So, I mean, what Seb's talking about is people's attempts, though they're imperfect, 
to mm. do a, a representative poll of Labour members because we don't have a full knowledge of exactly who those people are and we know loads of people have joined. That polling methodology is questionable, but Keir Starmer is so far ahead in those polls that it, they, there would have to be a really serious kind of methodological error for that not to be an indication that, that he is more popular among, among the membership. Whether that's right or wrong or whether he's a good guy or not, it's completely different question, not one I can contribute to, but like the evidence, as Seb says, is that more Labour members seem to be turning towards Kistama. I just when you're on the doorsteps, just I'm just intrigued. Um, do you do, do you get a sense that people think that Rebecca Long Bailey is the one to beat Boris Johnson? To be perfectly honest, on the doorsteps around Milton Keynes, they don't care about the Labour leadership. <laughs> they care about local area, like local issues. They care about you know a rise in gang violence or. How do you know who they would like as the Labour leader then? Who'd be more electable as Prime Minister? Well, from talking to people I meet through work and stuff who are a bit more politically engaged, but I assure you, when I go and knock on like houses in my estate. They, they are not that politically but, engaged. But and I think that's kind the key thing, because to be leader of the opposition, right, and most leaders of the opposition don't get to be prime minister. We've only had two in, like, basically my lifetime who've managed it. Uh, they have oh, yeah, to make people point, actually, care, yeah, right? Yeah. You have to make people know who you are. You have to be inspirational, not just to the narrow faction of your membership, though, you know, that doesn't do any harm. You have to make millions and millions of people vest their faith in you that you could lead their country. And for all of Boris Johnson's faults, he has made people think they want him to be the leader. And, you know, Rebecca Long Bailey's, I agree on the Green New Deal, there's a lot of sensible policies there. She's a, she's a great MP, fine. But does she really feel like she could lead the country to transform? Certainly not to me, uh, and I, I, I yet to see that from any of the Labour leadership um, candidates. Really she definitely Andy. does, and I actually think that the... You, you mentioned kind of hesitation at her standing up. Actually, I think, to me, if that is true, that actually works in my favour. That means that people around her have said, we would like you to leave, and I think that's a much more admirable quality in a future leader than somebody who goes into it with career aspirations of their own. Yeah. I think the general public are actually sick and tired of politicians in general from every party, <laughs> um, and I think that's being, being reflected. I, I think that a lot of people voted um, Conservative kind of as a protest vote and mainly off the back of Get Brexit Done. Let's face it, that was clear messaging. It was strong messaging. It got through not only to leave voters, but also through to people who mm, had voted for Remain. The had, yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. all remember exactly what that was. <laughs> for me, you asked um, me on as a trade unionist and as someone who has recently got involved and has come from 10 years of waitressing, Rebecca Long Bailey, for me, is the future leader of this party. Could you live with Keir Starmer as leader? I could live you... with anybody as the leader. Okay. Like, 100%. I don't agree in this kind of you pick someone and you die on a, on a hill for them. Even okay. if it's Tony but... Blair? <laughs> I wasn't around. He's before my time again. <laughs> I don't think you talk about, the <laughs> you talk about yeah. transformational policies, <laughs> and actually, it is the minimum wage, devolution to Scotland, um, that the, the Labour Party did, that the Labour Party now disowns, including Rebecca Long Bailey, who's willing to give uh, Jeremy Corbyn 10 out of 10 whilst claiming that she also complained about the dealing with anti Semitism, none of which makes sense. Like, 10 out of 10 and he was wrong about some stuff. I don't it, think we did say the things that Labour's done they, really well historically. I'm I don't think fantastic we did to discover that you don't. A lot of people in the Labour Party do not want to talk about... In fact, they, they reject the idea that the 97 to 2010 government was a Labour government at all because they say there hasn't been a Labour government in our lifetimes. OK, now for something completely different. Trainers.